Good morning. Welcome to New Key Baptist Church on this Lord's Day and also this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday, where we celebrate and remember the risen Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, I actually want us to consider the topic of the resurrection of Jesus by looking at the question, did Jesus rise from the dead? But before we begin our sermon, let us read God's word together and then let us open with prayer. Let us read the scripture. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 28 and we'll be looking at verse 11 to 15. Matthew 28, 11 to 15. Now while they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priest all the things that had happened. When they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. And if it comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. This is God's word. Let us pray together. Oh, our God and our Father, as we come before you on this Resurrection Sunday, this Sunday in which we remember the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray that you would be glorified, that today you would remind us of Calvary and all that was achieved, that this day we would look upon the Lord Jesus Christ and that we would love him and honour him with all that we have. Lord, please be with me as I preach May I know the liberty of your spirit and the unction that comes from you. And may I be faithful to proclaim your word. We pray all these things for Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, it was in the lead up to Easter 2017 when a wide-reaching survey was conducted in this nation asking people what they believed about Easter and in particular, what they believed about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, the response to that questionnaire was quite interesting. It revealed much about what this nation believes. Uh, according to the statistics, 44% of those in the UK survey believed that Jesus died and rose again, just as the Bible says. 44% of British people said they believe the biblical account of the resurrection. One in ten people of those surveyed, that is one in ten of those surveyed who are agnostic, atheists or sceptics, those who have no religion, they said they believed that the biblical account of the death and resurrection of Jesus is true and accurate. That's one in ten atheists, agnostics, sceptics, those who have no religion, saying they believe the biblical account. Now this creates all kinds of questions which should be followed up at a later time. But probably the most alarming and most concerning statistic from this survey was found when they asked professing Christians what they believed. This survey found that 72% of those who say they follow the Lord Jesus 72% of those who say they are Christian believe in the biblical account of the resurrection. 72%. Now that means there are 28% who say they are Christian, who say they love Jesus, they follow Jesus, perhaps they go to church occasionally. 28% of those surveyed said that they did not believe that Jesus rose again from the dead. Now this creates a problem because the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is a central and fundamental doctrine to the Christian faith. If you deny the resurrection of Jesus, if you say Jesus did not die and rise again, then the Bible makes it clear that you are not a Christian. You see, what this survey actually reveals is that there are many people in our nation who think they are Christians. There are many people who perhaps will say they are Christian, who when they fill in forms at the doctor's or at some other place, will tick a box saying Christian when it asks for their religious beliefs. There are that many people in this land, 28%, who would say they are believers, but in reality they're not Christian at all. See, the denial of the resurrection of Jesus Christ would be 
like a Muslim saying that they follow Islam and not believing in Muhammad. You'd say that's not possible. You cannot be a Muslim and deny Muhammad. Likewise, you cannot be a Christian and deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is a ludicrous statement to say that I follow Jesus, but I don't believe he rose again. In fact, the Bible says this is a key ingredient for actually becoming a Christian. In Romans chapter 10, it says that we must confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. Then you will be saved. Then you will be a Christian. If you deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you cannot be a Christian. You see, the resurrection of Christ is central. It is the centre focus of the entire Christian faith. If there is no resurrection of the Lord Jesus, then there is no Christianity. If there is no resurrection of Christ from the dead, then there is no salvation, there is no forgiveness of sin, and there is no hope. The Easter celebration, what we celebrate today on this Resurrection Sunday, is of vital importance. It is central for all those who say they are Christian. Yet even though the resurrection of Christ is such a fundamental thing that we must believe, each year when Easter rolls around, it's as if people don't pay too much attention to what the holiday is all about. Uh, this stands in stark contrast to what we see at Christmas. At Christmas, there are many months of Christmas carols, songs singing about the birth of Jesus. There are Christmas specials on TV. There are Christmas events where everyone begins to think and consider the birth of Jesus. But when it comes to Easter, when it comes to his death, his burial and resurrection, there isn't much celebration at all. Now, I'm sure the shops will sell bunnies and eggs and there'll be little reminders here and there about Easter. But overall, the celebration of Easter is small when compared to Christmas. Yet the truth is, this weekend, this Resurrection Sunday, this Easter celebration is vitally important for the Christian faith. I cannot stress it enough. If the resurrection of Jesus never took place, then there would be no Christianity. I mean, think about it for just a moment. If Jesus Christ never rose again from the dead, then everything that Christians have been proclaiming for 2,000 years is a waste of time. Everything in Christianity is built around the fact that our Saviour, the Messiah, God the Son, the Lord Jesus, died on the cross, died for sinful people, but then rose again from the dead three days later. That's the central message of the Christian faith. Christ crucified and Christ risen again. If that's not there, there is no hope. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 15, 17, the Bible says, And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. If there is no resurrection, if there is no Jesus coming back to life, then there is no hope. There's nothing at all. The resurrection of Jesus is the linchpin for the entire Christian faith. Without it, the whole system fails. Uh, think of it like this. Uh, a few years ago, and it was a few years ago now, uh, my wife and I got to have one of those elusive things called a day off. And on this day off, for some reason, we had none of our children with us. So my wife and I said it would be nice for us just to go out together and have a lunch. Perhaps have a date day. We could just have lunch together and then we can go and pick up the kids later on. So we went to this restaurant. We had a nice lunch. And after lunch, we went back to our car. We hopped in and we got ready to leave. I put the key in the ignition. I turned it on and there was nothing. There was no roar of the engine. There was just simply quietness. Nothing occurred whatsoever. There was no engine turning over. There was no sound of a dead battery. There was no clicks. There was no bumps. There was nothing, just silence. Now, I'm no mechanic, but even I knew this wasn't supposed to happen. I knew that this was not good and there was something wrong. So I got out and I pretended to be a good mechanic. I put up the bonnet. I looked at the engine. I pretended I knew what I was doing, but I had no idea. 
And after a while, we thought it was probably best to call roadside assistance to see if they can come out and get our car started. Well, roadside assistance showed up and this man knew what he was doing. He took a look under the bonnet and he quickly found the problem. One small wire had come loose and as a result, the whole vehicle was rendered useless. Likewise, the event of Jesus dying and rising again, if that truth comes loose, if that did not happen, then the whole system of Christianity is useless. And this is why over the centuries, so many people have focused on attacking the resurrection of Christ. They know that if they can destroy the truth that Jesus rose again from the dead, then everything else about Christianity becomes null and void. Uh, for 2,000 years, people have tried to disprove the resurrection. They have tried to attack the risen Christ, but every attack that they have launched has failed. Every attack going into the future about the resurrection of Christ will fail. Why? Because Christ is risen from the dead, just as he said he would. But as we look at our text this morning, as we look at our Bibles, and we go back to an account here of the first Easter Sunday, the first Resurrection Sunday, we see that within hours of Jesus rising from the dead, there was already an attack underway to try and disprove the resurrection. In fact, in our text we have before us this morning, we see the religious leaders, those who were set apart in Israel to instruct the people, deciding that they did not want to believe in the resurrected Christ. And as a result, they spread lies. So let's look together at our passage and let's begin to see the first attack and then see subsequent attacks that have happened against the resurrection of Jesus. Now before we look at this specific attack, it will be helpful for us to set the scene. It's always important when we look at the Bible to understand the context, to understand what is going on. So let me set the scene for you. What is happening? Well, what we have detailed here in Matthew chapter 28, verse 11 to 15, is an event that has occurred shortly after Jesus has risen from the dead. Now, this whole period of time is loaded with significance. A few days earlier, Jesus Christ was arrested. He went through the show of a mock trial. And those religious leaders at the mock trial who condemned him to death are the same religious leaders who are about to make up a lie and spread a false information about Christ. Jesus himself was innocent. Jesus should never have been condemned. He did nothing wrong. But these corrupt religious leaders wanted to put an end to Christ. So they found him guilty. They accused him of all kinds of wickedness. The crowds of that day called for his death and the religious leaders were more than happy to give it to him. So Jesus is condemned. He's mocked, he's beaten, and then he's taken out to a hill outside of Jerusalem where he is crucified on a cross to die. Now this event itself should not have been a shock to the followers of Jesus or indeed for those who knew the Old Testament scriptures. Jesus himself had told his followers many, many times over that he would be delivered into the hands of wicked men and that he would die and then rise again. In fact, in the Old Testament, written hundreds of years before Jesus was born, we see prophecies concerning this event of the crucifixion. For instance, in Psalm 22 and in Isaiah 53, we see that the Messiah, that is God's Saviour, would be crucified and killed by wicked men. We see it declared that the Messiah, the Saviour, would die in the place of sinners. That he would bear the punishment of sin. Now sin's punishment is death and judgment. Since we all sinned, we all deserve death and judgment. But Easter tells us that God the Son, the Lord Jesus, has come into this world to pay the sin punishment for his people. But not only did Jesus die on the cross, but all the prophecies and all of Jesus' teaching indicated that three days after he died, he would rise again from the dead. Christ himself said that he had the power to lay down his life and he had the power to take it up again. Now the religious leaders that we get introduced to in this passage knew all about these teachings. 
They had heard what Christ had said. Even in the illegal trial, they were reminded that Jesus said he would rise again after three days. And these religious leaders, even though they knew the claims of Christ, even though they knew the teachings of the Bible, did not like the idea that Christ could be the Messiah. So after Christ was crucified, these religious leaders decide that what needs to be done is that a guard needs to be mounted on the tomb. So soldiers are brought in. Soldiers are placed in position to guard the tomb. A giant stone is placed over the entrance of the tomb, so it is sealed. Now the religious leaders do all this hoping that this will prevent someone coming to steal the body. Who can steal a body when the tomb is sealed by a giant rock? Who can steal the body when you have crack soldiers standing at the guard, waiting, ready to defend the tomb at all costs? Now these soldiers were good at their job. Nothing was going to get past them. They were elite guards. As Roman soldiers, if they had failed in their duty, they would have been executed. If one of them had fallen asleep while on watch, then they would lose their lives. It was a very good motivation to be good at your job and to stay awake. In the British Army, if you fall asleep while you're on guard duty, you will be placed on a charge, but you won't be killed. The Romans were much harsher. You sleep, you fail, you die. So these guards are standing outside the tomb of Jesus, and they are ready for anything. They're not going to fall asleep. They're not going to let anyone pass them. Their job is to stop someone coming to steal the body. So picture the scene. Jesus has died. He has been buried in the grave. The tomb is sealed. Soldiers are standing guard. And for a couple of days, everything looked calm. Everything appeared as a graveyard should. But all that changed on Sunday morning. On the third day, after Jesus had died, on the Sunday morning, the Bible tells us that an angel descended from heaven. And he came along and he rolled the stone away. And the guards who saw this angel were terrified. And the Bible says they fell down as if they were dead men. Once the stone had been rolled away, the angel sat on top of it and he declares with a shout of victory, He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And if you had peered into the tomb at that cry, you would have seen that the body of Christ was gone. The resurrection had taken place. But how is that possible? The tomb was sealed. Soldiers were standing guard. No one could have got in to steal the body. Now those who were observing at this time of history should have instantly remembered what Jesus said. I have the power to lay down my life and I have the power to take it up again. Jesus said the Son of Man will be crucified but on the third day he would rise again. The people then should have heard all that and remembered what Jesus had said. And when Christ is risen indeed. The religious leaders who condemned Christ to death, they should have repented of their sins and said that they had killed the Messiah, they had killed God's chosen one. They should have accepted that they were wrong and they had sinned, but they don't. The religious leaders, upon hearing the news that Christ is risen, decide that this is unacceptable. They don't accept the truth. Instead, they make up lies to cover their tracks and to make it look like Jesus never rose again. And throughout history, we have seen people like these religious leaders who have devoted their life and their efforts to trying to disprove the resurrection of Jesus. And the key reason they do this, the key reason the religious leaders deny the risen Christ, and the key reason that people today deny Jesus rising from the dead, is because if Jesus rose from the dead as he said, then all that he taught and said is true. And if it is true, it means he is God, and it means we must submit to him. It means we must turn from our sins and trust in him, and people don't like that. We don't like the idea of submitting to a king, so we rebel against him. 
We choose to believe a lie instead of the clear truth that Jesus is risen from the dead, just as he said. So these religious leaders, upon hearing of what has happened, make up what would become known as fake news today. Uh, listen to what the Bible says. Matthew 28, 11 to 15. Now while they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all the things that had happened. When they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. So here's the scene. The angels descended, the soldiers have seen the tomb is empty. They are terrified, so they rush back into Jerusalem. They rush back into the city. And when they get to the city, some of them go to the religious leaders and they tell the religious leaders all that has happened. Uh, they say this angel has come down from heaven. This angel had rolled the stone away. The angel then sat on the stone and said, have a look, the grave is empty. And the soldiers probably said, we looked, the body was gone. He wasn't there. He is risen. And then the religious leaders hear all this go, hang on a second. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't you be saying that. This is unacceptable. We need to come up with a plan to say Jesus never rose again. So the religious leaders, they get together and they conspire. They come up with fake news. They, they say, here's what really happened. They go to the soldiers, they hand them a bag of gold and say, this is what you're going to tell them. You're going to tell everyone that Jesus didn't rise again. You're going to tell everyone that his disciples came along at night time and stole the body while you were asleep. That's the story you're going to tell. Now instantly we should see a problem with this story. In fact, we should see a couple of problems. First, if the soldiers were asleep, how do they know the disciples stole the body of Jesus? You know, it's not like the Apostle Peter came along and graffitied on the, on the tomb saying Peter was here. That didn't happen at all. If they were asleep, how would they know what happened? How would they sleep through the fact that a stone was being rolled away? No, that makes no sense. But another problem is this. If they were asleep, then it doesn't matter how much gold they have, they're about to be executed for failing in their duties. Now, no doubt the soldiers went to the religious leaders and said, um, Sir, great idea, thank you for the gold, but there's a slight problem. I will die if I tell that story. So the religious leaders come back and say, Well, if this all gets to the governor's ears, we will appease him also and we'll make you secure. In other words, we'll pay you off and we'll also bribe the governor if it gets to that point. See, these religious leaders were so committed to attacking the resurrection that even though they knew for certain that Jesus had raised from the dead, just as he said, they were prepared to spread and believe a lie. For them, the concept of the resurrection of Christ was completely unacceptable. So they'd rather believe a lie than the truth. And throughout history, many people have joined with these religious leaders in trying to spread lies and deny the resurrection of Jesus. There have been many attacks throughout history, attacks that still come to this day. In fact, if you watch any of the Easter specials that seem to get broadcast on our television networks, you will often find that you will find a scholar who will use some of these arguments to question the resurrection of Jesus. For instance, one of the most common arguments that goes around today is the claim that Jesus never actually died in the first place. There is a claim that Jesus never went to the cross. In fact, someone else was crucified on the cross and it was just made to appear that it was Jesus and some people thought it was Jesus. Uh, this is actually the teaching of Islam. They believe Jesus didn't die. It was someone else who died who looked like Jesus. But there are big problems with this idea. The big problem is the eyewitnesses, those who were there. You see, Jesus didn't die in isolation in some room somewhere. No, he died in public so all could see him. 
And as he died on the cross, we are told that his family and his disciples were there. In fact, they conversed with Jesus. They had a conversation with Christ while he was on the cross. Surely the family and the disciples and the friends of Jesus knew who they were talking to. The idea that it was someone else and not Jesus who died just doesn't stand up to the eyewitness accounts. Others will then say, well, actually, yes, Jesus was on the cross, but he never really died. It, rather, he simply passed out. And the Romans thought he was dead, so they took him off the cross, put him in the tomb, and while he was in the cool of that tomb, he revived. And when he revived, he somehow moved the heavy stone, overpowered the guards, and escaped. And he did all this, even though he was suffering from the wounds of being beaten and mocked and ridiculed, even though his flesh was hanging off him from crucifixion, somehow Jesus had enough energy to take out a Roman squad and move a stone. Now that doesn't make sense. Nor does it align with the lie that the soldiers actually spread. Further, it doesn't even fit the medical evidence. You see, those who deny that Jesus died on the cross, those who say Jesus never really died, don't realise that there's actually medical evidence to show that he did. In John chapter 19, verse 34, we are told that when Christ died on the cross, a Roman soldier pierced his side. And as he pierced his side, blood and water flowed out. Medical science has now shown that this clear fluid and blood actually comes from around the heart and it only occurs at the point of death. So the medical science says Jesus was crucified. He was fully dead. And finally, if that's not enough, we also have the historical evidence. From Roman historians such as Tacitus, who was no friend of Christianity, he records in his histories that Jesus indeed was crucified, he was dead, and he suffered under Pontius Pilate. The claims that Jesus never really died, and therefore he could not rise again, just do not stand up to the weight of the evidence. The arguments are all answered. You see, the evidence constantly points to the fact that Jesus indeed was crucified, he was dead, but then on the Sunday morning his body was gone. And the only reasonable explanation that can be given is that Jesus rose from the dead just as he said he would. You see, the religious leaders who bribed these soldiers, they acknowledge that the body of Christ is gone. They know the body's missing. If the body wasn't missing, all they would have had to do to disprove Christianity was to produce the body, but they can't. The body is gone. So instead, they pay soldiers and even the governor to spread lies, to spread a false message. But how did the disciples of Jesus respond to all this? They had heard Jesus teach. That he was going to die on the cross and rise again. They had heard him teach that repeatedly. And no doubt they heard the lies that the soldiers spread. We know that because one of the disciples of Jesus records it for us in the Bible. How did the disciples of Christ respond to the missing body? Well, some of them were sceptical. They questioned, they doubted, they wanted proof. And the proof they got for the risen Christ is the fact that Jesus appeared to them after he had died. And they went from being sceptics to worshipping Jesus, declaring him as Lord and God. They saw the risen Christ and from that moment their lives were radically changed. In fact, out of the 12 disciples, the 12 apostles, 11 of them would eventually be executed for their preaching and teaching that Jesus died and rose again. Now, if these men knew that it was a lie, if they knew that Jesus hadn't risen from the dead, if they had stolen the body like the claims were, then why would they die for something they knew was a lie? They wouldn't do that. They would be a madman. Uh, that, that would be like an incident occurring in Newquay today. And then this incident is so great, it's so spectacular. 
that several eyewitnesses write down their account of what is happening. But instead of reporting the details, we embellish them a little bit. And this embellished truth becomes a testimony that gets handed down throughout the years. And in 50 years from now, someone finally comes along and says, you need to stop teaching that embellished truth about the event you saw in Newkin. And we say it's not embellished. We're telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But at that moment, the person who has told you to stop speaking pulls out a knife and says, if you don't start telling the truth, I'm going to cut you up. When you are faced with the reality of death, your lies will not stand up. You will quickly renounce a lie. And these disciples of Jesus, if they had stolen the body, if they had embellished the truth, when they were faced with some of the harshest death penalties the world has ever seen under the Roman Empire, they would have quickly renounced the faith. But they don't. They stand fast and they declare that Christ was crucified and that he has risen from the dead just as he said he would. And as a result of them testifying, even to the point of death, many in the Roman world were converted. Only a madman would die for what he knows is a lie. But these disciples of Jesus were prepared to confirm their message and to proclaim that they had seen the risen Christ by sealing their testimony in their own blood. Jesus is risen. His disciples who were sceptical saw him and then believed. But you might say, well, well, that was just the the followers of Jesus. They, They believed. But no, we're actually told that even though the Roman soldiers were spreading this false message that they were paid to spread, after the resurrection of Christ, over 500 witnesses saw the Lord Jesus. Over 500 people saw Jesus risen from the dead. If you went to a court of law and you showed up to make your case with 500 witnesses, you're going to have a very strong case. You're going to win that case. And there are over 500 people who were living at the time the Bible, the New Testament was written, who all said, yes, <laughs> this is true because we saw him. But some will say, well, all those 500, well, they were just uh, friends of Jesus. They liked Jesus, so they had an interest in teaching his message. But what we need to realise is that not all of those eyewitnesses were followers of Jesus to begin with. In fact, there was one eyewitness who saw the risen Christ, who before he saw Jesus, was a Jewish religious leader. He was a religious leader who hated Christianity. A religious leader who devoted his life to killing Christians. His name was Saul. Yet he saw the risen Christ. And as a result, he was transformed. He became a follower of Jesus. We call him the Apostle Paul or Saint Paul today. You see, the eyewitnesses that saw Jesus were not all mates of Christ. Some of them were his enemies. And they too saw the risen Jesus and said, Christ is risen just as he said. See, all the evidence points to the fact that the grave is empty and Jesus has risen just as he promised. Did Jesus rise from the dead? Absolutely. And now, some 2,000 years later, we are still celebrating. We are still declaring that Christ is risen from the dead. Now, time does not permit us this morning to go into all the different arguments. I've tried to give you the, the Reader's Digest overview this morning. But there are many more arguments that can be made that show the evidence of the resurrection of Christ. Uh, Let me just recommend a couple of books to you if you would like to study it further. These books are easy to find on Amazon. First book I would recommend is The Case for Easter. The Case for Easter by Lee Strobel. This book is a fascinating little book. It was written by a man who was an investigative journalist who did not believe he was an atheist. But as he researched and studied, he became convinced. So he wrote this book called The Case for Easter by Lee Strobel. The second book is is a book called The Defense of Easter by Tim Chappie. The Defense of Easter by Tim Chappie. A little bit more in depth. This book looks at some of the arguments and the counter arguments and the history and the medical science and it shows beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is risen from the dead. In Defense of Easter by Tim Chappie. Both of these books will be very helpful for you 
if you ask the question, did Jesus indeed rise again? So Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. And even though wicked men then and wicked men throughout history and today spread the lie and try and attack the resurrection of Christ, the truth is the grave is still empty. And the question we have to ask as we close this morning is this. So what? So what? This is 2,000 years ago. What impact does the resurrection of Christ have on me today? Why is it important? Why do we even celebrate it? Well, to understand why it's important, we need to look at why Jesus died in the first place. You see, Jesus died not because he did something wrong. No, Jesus is completely innocent. He died because he had come to rescue people. To rescue a people who had sinned against God. Now the Bible says you and I have all sinned, we've all sinned against God. We've all done that which is wrong. We break his laws. We do our own things. We lie and steal and lust and hate. We, we blaspheme the God that gives us life. We all sin against our creator. And because of our sin, a death sentence has been proclaimed upon us. If you break the law in New King, the police will arrest you, you'll be fined, and you perhaps will end up in jail. If you do something wrong, there's a consequence. The same is true with God. When we break God's law, when we sin against God, there is a consequence. And the consequence for our sin is death and judgment. But Jesus Christ shows love towards sinful people. Jesus Christ steps down out of the glories of heaven. He comes to this earth and he dies on the cross in the place of sinful people. He takes the punishment his people deserve on the cross. But he doesn't just die. He's buried in a borrowed tomb. And then three days later, he rises again from the dead, just as he said he would. And now, because Jesus has died and risen again, the consequence for our sin, that is death and judgment, has been paid for. So if we would now turn from our sins, that's called repent, and trust in the Lord Jesus, trust that it's only by his death and resurrection that we are saved, then we would know the forgiveness of sins. We would know hope and we would be assured of heaven when we die. The so what factor is this. Why do I need Jesus to die and rise again? Why is this important? Because if Jesus had not done this, then you would still face eternal judgment. If Jesus had not done this, there would be no hope, no forgiveness, no heaven. That's why we celebrate. Because Christ has come, he has died on the cross for sinners, he has rose again from the dead, and now he extends a hand of mercy to all people to repent and believe, to trust in Christ. If you reject that offering of Christ, then you will continue in your sin and you'll end up in judgment in hell. But... If you today would trust in the Lord Jesus, if you would turn from your sin and believe that he has died on the cross and he has risen from the dead. If you would trust in him, then you would be forgiven. At Easter, we often say Easter reminds us of new life. Exactly. Christ gives new life. To all those who come to him, he will make them a brand new person. He will forgive all their sins. They will become a new creation. They will be known by God and they will love God. And they will go to heaven one day. So this day, look at the cross of Jesus. See why he died. But then look beyond the cross and look to the tomb. See that it is sealed. See that there's guards standing over it. But then look up and see the angel descend and roll the stone away. Look into the grave and then hear the cry of the angel. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said he would. Look into the grave, see Christ is risen from the dead. And then cry out to God, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus, rescue me, save me. I believe you died for me and you rose again. Oh, forgive me of all my sin. And the Bible says if you would trust in the Lord Jesus, if you would call upon the name of the Lord, you would be saved. Today, the grave is still empty. Christ is alive. He is risen, just as he said. Trust 
in him. Let us pray. Oh, our God and our Father, we thank you for the reminder of your word today that Jesus Christ has been crucified for us, that he has risen from the dead, just as he said, that all the arguments that wicked men put up against the resurrection of Christ come to nothing. Oh, Lord, today may we know with confidence that the grave is empty and may we all look to the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Oh, Lord, today we ask for mercy, we ask for grace, and we pray that many would come to you in repentance this day. We pray all these things for Jesus' sake. Amen.